Hello, and welcome to the introduction to the CNCF SIG storage. Um, today, we're going to be talking about the cloud native storage landscape um, and what, we're, what we've been seeing and what we've been working on and the, what we're seeing in the future for uh, cloud native storage. Um, uh, my name is Alex Kirkop. Um, I'm the founder and CEO of Storage OS and one of the co-chairs of the SIG storage. Um, and I'm here with uh, uh, my co-presenter, Erin Boyd. Hi, uh, thank you, Alex, for that introduction. My name is Erin Boyd. I currently work for Apple in cloud engineering and also the co-lead of the CNCF storage SIG, as Alex mentioned. And uh, Quinton is unable to join us today, but also serves as a co-lead as part of the CNCF. Next slide. So today we want to cover quite a few areas around the CNCF storage SIG. Uh, we want to talk about what the SIG does, how you can join and help out. Also an overview of some of the storage projects um, that exist now within the CNCF at incubation and graduation level. We'll also take a look at a couple of the projects that are currently in review. And then Alex is going to go into areas we would like to see more projects uh, participate in possible gaps in the landscape, an overview of the CNCF storage landscape document that was published earlier this year, and an overview of the performance and benchmarking document that has uh, recently been published. So uh, what do we do with the SIG? First of all, all of our meetings are open. We meet twice a month on the second and fourth Wednesday of every month at 8 a.m. Pacific. And you can see here several links um, to list out what our charter is, uh, who generally participates. It also has a link to the current conference call that we use every time we meet so that you can just bookmark that. And then our agenda, which is open for anyone to add items that they would like to discuss within that. Also within the agenda, we try to keep very thorough meeting minutes. Um, and then there's the recordings. So if you have time and you want to go back, you're welcome to watch any of the previous recordings of the meeting. And then lastly, we would love for you to join the mailing list. The mailing list, we send out information, uh, questions that may come up, also uh, links to the recording and the agenda when we're done with each one of the calls. So. Our calls and our membership are always open. We're completely transparent. So if you have any questions or concerns, you can reach out to us through any of those means. So who is on the storage SIG? What is it comprised of? So I would say currently the participants within the CNCF storage SIG are a very diverse group of both users and developers of cloud native technologies. Um, and we all have a strong storage focus. And we're all leaders and early adopters. Many of us have been involved in Kubernetes since the beginning and um, have seen the progression of how storage has changed from being a technology where we pre-provision volumes and connected to them to dynamically provision to you know, adopting object storage, for instance. And so we're organized into three different leads, all from different uh, vendors or companies, uh, Alex, myself, and Quentin. And then we have tech leads who are volunteers that help also review projects and do due diligence. Uh, Jing, Luis, Sugu, and then Saad. Saad is also a TOC member, so he helps perform some of the TOC duties uh, to the storage SIG as a liaison between the two. So what do we do? What exactly is involved in our participation in the CNCF storage SIG? So the idea of the SIG was to have subject matter experts in storage be able to review projects or talk to different projects and early adopters so that the TOC could then scale those contributions in a way that they feel like were you know, reviewed technically, their due diligence was done on it, and also be able to reach out to the end user community for storage uh, to retain that integrity and quality um, and therefore support the CNCF mission. Uh, there are a multitude of projects that apply, you know, weekly, monthly that want to be part of the CNCF and 
it became a bottleneck to be able to review those fully. So the idea of the six was created, separated out by different components within the cloud native landscape. And here we are with storage SIG. And the storage SIG was one of the first SIGs to be created. Um, and most of us have served since then. So what we do as part of that mission is we educate, uh, we review the storage project proposals, we engage with the user community, and we work with the TOC and other SIGs. So what does that mean, other SIGs? So many times projects cross over these different lines. They don't meet into these nice little containers uh, for a pun. So many times a project will come into the CNCF uh, and they will have a component of storage within that. They might have a key value store, they might have a database associated with it. So then we work with the other SIGs to make sure that it has a cloud native architecture, it fits within the means of the mission and uh, perform the due diligence necessary to make sure it's an appropriate project to be accepted. So part of that end user education is publishing white papers and various other items that help educate our end users on how to select the best storage for the use case that they're wanting to use uh, and adopt. And so white papers, presentations, videos, all of these things are a form of training to better teach people new to Kubernetes or new to cloud native, or who may be coming from legacy applications and how they need to change them. We try to develop generalized vendor-free best practices around this. We try to create a common nomenclature of which we talk about different storage technologies and different patterns and publish those out so that we can see the trends within the community, within um, the wider landscape and help users make the best choices for what they're trying to accomplish. So the first one of those things that we published globally was the CNCF storage white paper. It's on version two and the white paper is long, but it is extremely comprehensive in trying to net out what are all the different components involved in traditional storage and also within CNC, also within the cloud native landscape. What do those things mean when we start running them in a cloud native fashion? The second piece is the performance and benchmarking white paper. For many people, it's critical to have a very performant uh, file system or way of utilizing storage. And so this is our first pass, um, it'll be a version one to be able to articulate how we could do performance and benchmarking within this cloud native landscape, because it's very different than it would be done in a normal traditional uh, storage. And then as much as possible, um, we provide that information and we publish it out to our users. And we strive to be very vendor agnostic, uh, open and um, publish everything that we can. And then part of the project review, um, there are within the CNCF TOC, if you go into GitHub, you can see many of the different processes laid out. You'll see this nice little graph we have at the bottom published there as well. And so this shows how the SIG is involved in the review of many projects. And so our, part of our job is to first identify to the CNCF gaps that we see in the project portfolio, but then to also go through um, the current projects and make sure that they're still tracking where they should be. Ideally, when projects are accepted into Sandbox, the idea is that we see a viability of that project and we want to see it progress through the different levels, um, incubation and then graduation. And so part of that, um, we call them health checks, but it's really projects moving from level to level and seeing if um, they're meeting the criteria from one to the next. It's also to perform discovery and outreach to different projects. We um, may hear of a project within the community or so may reach out to them. We have them come present on our bi-monthly meeting, uh, discuss the technology, and then see if they're a good candidate for acceptance into the CNCF at the different levels. We also help those candidate projects. So part of our job is not to be um, the yes or no, let's say, within these projects. But part of it is to identify maybe where there's gaps and work with that project. 
to help them remedy any issues that we might see that would prevent them from being part of, uh, you know, incubation or graduating the project. And so once we have the projects assigned, it's uh, assigned to the SIG. We also then work through this process, as you can see at the bottom, um, to review it, to provide a recommendation to the TOC. Once we have done that, the TOC agrees, they assign a sponsor from the TOC to drive that due diligence and then put it up for public uh, comment and then they vote on it. And that's generally how a project goes into incubation either through sandbox or incubation initially. Um, we engage, we, we really try to reach out to end users to gather their input and feedback regarding where they see pain points on um, either using these technologies or integrating the technologies into their roadmap. What are their primary use cases that they're using that technology? We try to document that and gather that. And we try to put that in a consumable report, either that be a presentation or then into our white paper as a new version. And we try to include in there, you know, what is what are the different components of that technology that make it unique? Maybe it's the design of the architecture, maybe it's the UX, but we try to capture all that information and publish it. We also try to enable the community. Um, our probably biggest thing is within our bi-monthly meeting um, and taking those agenda and notes, sending information out on the mailing list and keeping our communications open. And um, the documents, of course, are op obviously openly published and maintained and we're continually open to feedback. Those are living documents and we change them as they need to be done. And lastly, I believe, we work as a trusted advisor to the TOC. So many times, the TOC is formed of a limited number of people and depending on the year, there isn't always a representative who can speak to a subject matter expert level for storage. So the idea as well of having a storage SIG is to be able to be the trusted advisor to them to provide input in terms of how the project can scale, if it adheres to the CNCF values and also the health of the project. So, you know, our role is to augment possibly the experience of the TOC members as necessary. and community. We kind of already went over this um, in a couple slides before, but we really do want everyone to participate that wants to be here. And um, you will see here within the link where you can submit and help review projects. Maybe you don't have anything that you want to bring forward, but you want to be involved in the process and have input. We completely welcome that. And they are openly published and can be commented on. And, you know, Though we're just have looked mainly at management frameworks and block stores, you know, we're really focused on trying to get possibly more object stores in or databases, you know, the, I don't feel like we're at the limit of what we can accept within the storage thing. And there are many projects um, that have presented on the bi-monthly meeting, just some of them listed here. You're welcome to go back through the meeting minutes of the agenda search for any one of these and find the recording um, so that you can go learn more about these projects listed below. Yeah, just just um, a small interjection to, to, to echo the sort of the, the, the passion we have um, for the community. You know, we're, we're a really diverse community covering um, sort of vendors and leads and maintainers from different projects as well as you know, just uh, independent um, contributors, um, and and we're we're the, the the most exciting thing for us is is to discover new projects and discover um, uh, new concepts which which help the the cloud native um, storage environment. So, you know, as Erin said, please do um, propose your projects, and we'd we'd love to hear from you. Absolutely, and so thus far. Um, as far as projects that have been incubating or graduating, um, here's just some of the many. Rook just recently graduated in the last few weeks. Also Vitesse, etcd, TIKV, and then incubating is Dragonfly. So there's plenty of room for other projects still to be part of the CNCF storage thing. 
And so what wasn't mentioned on that slide as far as the levels is the CNCF sandbox. So the sandbox process has changed uh, dramatically within the past few years. And the sandbox is meant to be an early stage to identify potential projects that would be a good fit, but don't yet meet the criteria of incubation or graduation. So you can go to this link below, look at the different sandbox projects are there, and then also look at how you can contribute your project as a sandbox project. The idea though of the sandbox is truly to grow and cultivate the project into a viable incubation project. So um, both the TOC and the SIGs are committed to helping projects get visibility that they need, uh, contributions and advice. So the current projects that we're reviewing uh, for incubation is Provega. You can learn more about them at the link below. And then OpenEBS has been in Sandbox for quite some time. They have applied to incubation and we're currently reviewing um, the criteria for that. Thank you, Erin. Um, okay, so I'd, I'd also um, like to cover off some of the some of the work that the SIG has been doing and some of the papers that um, that we've been public that have we have published recently. Um, we recently revised um, the CNCF uh, storage white paper um, with some additions. Um, the version two of the white paper is 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 there to explain the 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 variety in the cloud native storage landscape. And, and when we talk about um, um, storage in a, in a cloud native way, we're, we're, we're not talking about just um, storage systems in terms of volumes, but but indeed any way that you can persist data in, in a cloud native way. So, so that includes, you know, things like object stores and um, databases, for example. Um, and what's, what, what when we when we first set out to, to put this white paper together, we, we discovered that actually it's really important for end users to understand what their application needs um, and then to be able to translate that to the, the, the attributes of a storage system. Because in, in, in a cloud native world, um, developers get a, a much more um, active say in, in what the storage system is and, and, and which storage and which choice of storage system to, to use. So, so being able to understand the attributes that make up a storage system is, is really important, as is um, understanding all the different layers um, in, in a storage solution, as, as nowadays there are um, a variety of layers that, that affect the, the virtualization or the integration with, with an orchestrator. Um, and, and understanding those, those layers is also impactful to the, to the attributes of the storage system. And then finally, we, we review the different data access interfaces um, in terms of both volumes and APIs and, and also the definition of the, the management interfaces. So I've, I've put in a little summary in the next couple of slides to cover off things like the, the data access interface, which is, which is the way that you, um, that you persist or, or, or access data in the system. We, we, we tended to group this and the white paper into into two main buckets. The the first being volumes, you know, that can include um, traditional uh, block devices, um, file systems, or shared file systems, um, and this can be over a variety of of topologies, whether it's it's local, remote, or or, or distributed topologies, um, as well as uh, access of, to storage via APIs. So, for example, object stores or or key value stores or or different um, types of databases. Um, and although you know we're we're used to determining um, attributes based on on a different uh, on, on on different data access interfaces, um, like I said, it is kind of important to understand the the, the different topologies of those of those systems. As, as often, the the way that you access storage um, is is not um, is not a, a good indicator of of the attributes of the of the storage system. Um, Secondly, of course, in a cloud native world where we're looking at um, making uh, the, the workloads declarative and, and composable in, in much the same way that um, with an orchestrator like Kubernetes, you're, you're defining um, things like the, the compute or the memory requirements for your applications. 
um, with the different storage interfaces um, that that can that can apply. Um, CSI being the the the, uh, the CSI interface being the standard for for Kubernetes interfacing uh, with storage systems. Um, you have the ability now to be declarative across your storage workloads, and developers can define in a declarative way the the. The, what they need out of their storage environment in terms of, um, you know, the size of the volumes or the different attributes that the, that the storage system uh, can support in terms of, for example, um, replication or, or data protection, for example. Um, and it's 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 key to understand that that you know there are um, native interfaces and also some frameworks and tools that 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 provide um, that provide these these projects um, with the ability to. To provide the connectivity between the storage systems and uh, the different container orchestrators, we talked about the, the storage attributes. We defined um, five key um, storage attributes that are important within the within the cloud native storage uh, landscape when evaluating the different um, storage systems. Um, that it, those are availability, scalability, performance, consistency, and durability. Um, the key here is that um, each storage system may have um, may 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 have a number of different attributes, and often attributes um, can be uh, can cause compromises with different attributes. So, for example, um, you know, scalability and and performance and consistency um, might have um, projects might have different optimizations in each of those in each of those attributes to to hit different use cases. So, for example, um, systems that might be um, optimized for throughput might not be optimized for latency or um, systems that that um, might be uh, optimized for uh, redundancy or, or, or durability, for example, um, might not be optimized for throughput, for example. So, so it's it's important to understand what your application needs and, and what the storage system can provide um, under the covers, because there are a number of different ways of of um, measuring these these attributes, as 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 are listed in, on this um, on this page. Um, we also talked about the different storage layers in a in a storage system, um, and in an orchestrated environment, you will see that there are a number of different layers, starting from the container and the container namespace and the orchestrator, um, to the, the the different topologies that might be implemented in the storage system, whether it's um, centralized or, or 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 distributed or sharded with databases, for example, or 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 very commonly nowadays different hyperconverged topologies. Um, as well as the data protection um, capabilities, which which have, um, of course, uh, important uh, important uh, uh, impacts on data integrity, as well as you know consistency and latency, for example. And then the data services that allow um, that allow the, the flexibility within applications to provide um, snapshots for backups or data protection and replication, for example. And then we mustn't forget the the, the physical underlying um uh layers that 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 this that ultimately the different storage services are, are persisting data on um and then finally we recently released um our performance and benchmarking white paper um this was this was um something which was our first um offshoot from um the cncf uh storage white paper where we said we're going to um, provide additional details on some of the attributes. The first attribute being, being you know, the performance and, and the way we measure performance, <clears throat> as that seemed to be a common question um, amongst end users. So in the, in the white paper, we put some work together to define um, some of the common concepts for measuring the performance and the benchmarking of volumes. Um, what's important here is that you know we we made a decision not to specifically um, uh, assess the performance ourselves, but but this is more about providing end users with the information to be able to assess the performance of their own systems um, and 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 understand the, the the attributes of their own systems, whether it's you know um, storage on volumes or storage on databases, which were the two the two areas that we decided to focus on. As we were putting the paper together, we discovered that actually a lot of the challenges were around assessing 
um, you know, the common pitfalls and considerations that, that often come up when we're when when people are benchmarking systems. Um, and it's 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 definitely um, safe to say that apples to apples comparisons are extremely complicated in the storage world. There are um, lots of um, lots of factors that can um, affect performance. Everything from um, things like compression or different caching or different physical infrastructure or different virtualization parameters, um, or even things like um, you know encryption and and uh, and other types of data protection um, can can affect can dramatically affect the the performance of different systems. So. Ultimately, we decided to to make sure that all of this is enumerated and, and, and in an easy to understand way, and we provided some sample tools so that um, end users can can run their own benchmarks and understand the the attributes of their own system. Here's the most important takeaway: it is completely useless to um, to compare uh, vendor published results. Um, you know, if you're looking at IOPS or transactions per second or megabytes per second or whatever. Um, it is it is hard to impossible to compare the published results without actually understanding um, the specific test conditions. So what we always recommend is that um, end users run their own tests on their own storage in their own environment um, so that they can understand how their, their particular environment um, behaves with, with their storage environments. Um, and that ultimately gives them a better understanding and a better um, uh, and a better uh, capability of, of figuring out what their application needs and what their application demands are. And that's it. With that, we finish um, our presentation um, and we'd love to hear um, questions um, and we'll be, hope we'll be, uh, we'll be online to, to take questions and, uh, and hear any comments.